Welcome, everybody, to Figma for EDU using FigJam and Figma together. This is going to be a little bit different than some of our workshops. We're going to show some interoperability between Figma and FigJam. What we are going to be covering in this Figma for EDU session, we're going to be talking about using Figma and FigJam together. I'm going to show you the interoperability of designing something in Figma, bringing it into FigJam, and or using objects in FigJam, bringing them into Figma. We're also going to cover components, library publishing. And the reason that that's going to be important is because with education teams, you have the ability to publish component libraries. Cool. So uh, just a few things. I'm going to do some introductions here. My name is Miggy. I'm a designer advocate for Figma for Education. I'm also joined by Lauren, the head of Figma for Education. She's going to be doing some assists. Watch in the webinar chat. She might be dropping some links here and there that are going to be relevant to what it is that we're working on. If you would like a copy of today's file, today's file has some fun stuff in it. It's got some different elements, and it even has some libraries that you can publish and deconstruct and use yourself. If you want a copy of this file, you can head on over to figma.com slash at education, and you can download this file right here. So the Figma for EDU using Figma and FigJam together. There's some goodies in there. We're going to be referencing the files that we have in there. So if I'm doing something in this file, you can follow along at home and see what it is that I'm I'm doing as well. Uh, and you can play around and inspect and, and dig apart those files that I'm sharing. All right, cool. Um, so just a bit of housekeeping. Today's session is being recorded. Make sure that when you're chatting, you're setting your Zoom chat to everyone. I also ask that you please be kind. By joining this webinar, you are agreeing to be part of Figma's code of conduct policy. So please be kind to one another. We're all learning. We're all at different stages of our education journeys. You know, we put a lot of work to be here. Uh, so please be respectful of everyone that is joining here today. Uh, would also like to direct you, if you want to find out more about Figma's code of conduct, go to figma.com slash code dash of dash conduct. Um, a few other things too, please refrain. So please don't share LinkedIn links in the chat. I know we're all excited to network. We're all having, you know, a really good time, but I would please ask that you refrain from sharing LinkedIn links or any links in the webinar chat, uh, just to be respectful of everyone. So thank you very much in advance for doing that. Um, next up, just want to remind you all that Figma and FigJam are free for students and educators. So if you're teaching at a university, you know, if you are uh, uh, teaching or working or studying in a boot camp, um, you can have access to pro level features free. Head on over to figma.com slash education. If you are a K-12 educator, you can also check out our K-12 program. So if you go here, uh, and you identify as a K-12 educator, you can learn about our K-12 program. We have a slightly different uh, approach to putting those together, but you can get the most out of Figma and FigJam if you're K-12, if you can uh, uh, bring it to your district. All right, cool. Um, Next up, you can sign up, verify, make an education team. Uh, like I said, if you're in K-12, it's a different, little bit different of a process. So if you're higher ed, if you're over 13, you can just sign up and create an education team. Sign up for Vigma, verify your status at figma.com slash education, create that education team. I'm going to show you how to use the education team today. Uh, and then you can get started with templates. And I'm also going to show you what those templates are. I have just referenced those at figma.com slash at education. Um, and you can see this. And I, as mentioned already, uh, yeah, this session will be recorded. It's going to be recorded and shared out with you via email and will also be available on Figma's YouTube. Cool. So we host these workshops monthly. You can find future workshops at figma.com slash events. Um, and today's agenda, what we're going to be doing, I'm going to discuss how best to use Figma. Figma is a design tool that you can use to design pretty much anything. Folks use it to design websites, 
apps and to collaborate and work together as well as FigJam. FigJam is our whiteboarding tool that gives you the ability to uh, jot down ideas, work with others, plan, strategize, create diagrams, create sticky notes. You can create everything from affinity boards to timelines in FigJam. So I'm going to show you how to work these two applications together. We're going to do a quick overview of Figma education teams. We're going to do a quick overview of Figma itself. FigJam, I'm going to then walk through how to make reusable components in Figma, publish it to your team, have it available in FigJam, and to update and publish those libraries. Tons of examples. So let's go. Lauren, do you have anything you want to add? Anything I should discuss? We're good? No, that's great. Maybe just one other announcement I see to the right. That's pretty Ooh. fun. Yeah, so if y'all are not aware, Config is Figma's annual conference. You can see design talks, product talks, development talks. It's going to be held June 21st through 22nd. You could register for the virtual, which is completely free, config.figma.com. Uh, it's also will be held in San Francisco uh, live. So you can also attend live. Uh, Lauren's going to be sharing some code uh, out there to uh, help get you there live if you wish to join and you're an EDU community member. All right. So let's get going. The first thing is this file that I'm currently in is a Figma file. I'm holding down the space bar that allows me to click and drag and navigate around this space. This file over here on the left, I have a number of different pages. So if you already have an account, as I mentioned, you can download this file at figma.com slash at education and take a look through it. FigJam is gonna be a whiteboarding space. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate out of my Figma file. So I'm gonna click up here. I'm gonna go back to my file browser, right? And here's my file browser. Now, what I've done here is I have an education team and in that education team, I got an EDU project, right? So if I wanted to, I can create another project, right? And I can just say, this is my new project. I'll say new project. I can choose who I want to edit or have view access, and I can create that, and you will see that there. So in my education team, we have projects. In those projects, we're going to have files. So this is the file that I currently have in here, and what I'm going to do is create a new FigJam file. So you can see this highlighted right here. Another way that you can create a FigJam file is just go to figjam.new. So if I was to type in figjam.new, I just shared that with you. If you go to that URL, it will create a new FigJam document, or I can click right here and it will create that document for me in that team. So if I click up here and I go back to my files, I will see, okay, I have my new FigJam file, which is currently untitled, and I have the Figma file that I was just in. So here, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to be in this file. Oh, there's Lauren. Lauren's already in the file. So I'm going to hold down the H key and give Lauren a little high five for joining me in the file. Now, if I wanted to, I can create... A, a, I can use an existing template, right? I just clicked on that. I can delete that. Um, a lot of people are intimidated by a blank FigJam file, but what this is, it's a whiteboarding space that has a number of different tools that you can use. Now, in FigJam, I can draw, I can drop in little diagrams, and I can easily create connectors between those diagrams. I can even drop in little stickies, and I could leave a note for later, right? To do, you know, I got to do my laundry. Laundry. Um, but one cool thing about FigJam, right? I'm adding in all this stuff. Oh, and Lauren is even going in deep with the super diagrams. Um, I'm going to move this up. If you look down here, we have this more button. And this more button has things for like stickers, templates, widgets, and plugins. The two things I'm going to focus on today are the templates. There's a template in here called the timeline template in FigJam. This is a template that I built and, and put together for the EDU community. And it uses these special little arrows here that if I were to duplicate one, I can type in. And if 
as I'm typing, that's not a real word, right? I could say, hello, oops, hello, how are you today, right? So as I'm typing in, this arrow grows. If I want to drop in another arrow next to it, I can snap it in, right? And so these are not native Fig Jam objects, right? These are stickers that are brought into Fig Jam, but they're made using Figma, right? So this is something that I really enjoy uh, doing in Figma is actually making objects that I can then reuse in Fig Jam. So if I were to go down here, click more, and I go to stickers, you'll actually see a meeting agenda kit by Miggy, right? And if I click on that, there's all of these different objects in here and I can reuse them. All of these objects were made in Figma to be reused here. So they're editable and they grow, they shrink. And that's kind of, that's one of the things that I'm going to be talking about today, right? And even here, this template, let's say, oh, okay, I don't want this template. I can select it. I can delete it. All right. Let me clean this out. I'm going to select this. And I'm going to delete this, even though this looks pretty good. I'm going to swap back. I'm going to have another tab and I'm going to open up that Figma file. And I want to show you all how Figma and FigJam can work together. So I'm going to click on this first page here. So this first page that I have now that I'm inside of Figma, right? Figma is primarily used for designing things, right? I draw in shapes, I add in images, I put things together that I'm building out. But occasionally, how to create your own stickers? And I that that's actually why we're here. We're going to be talking about that. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is if I want to bring any of these like stickies or these shapes, if I look over here on the left, let me make my UI a little bit bigger. You'll see that all of these are sort of special objects and shapes that are inside of Figma, but they come from FigJam, right? So if I have this little connector, right? The connector is not something that can be made in Figma because Figma is primarily used for the custom designs, right? So it doesn't have all of these extra details, but you can bring them over. So if in FigJam, I'm creating, let's say a little, little flow here, right? I have two stickies and I create a line that exists between them two, right? And I'm planning out an idea, right? So step one and step two and I'm ready to enact that idea, I'm ready to work, um, I can keep it here. Or let's say I just want to quickly bring it over to Figma. I can do that. I can just bring it. I can paste it. And these objects exist. Uh, so there is no dark mode in FigJam. Somebody just asked me if there's dark mode in FigJam. But dark mode in Figma, I can hit Command-P or Control-P, and I can type in dark mode, and I get dark mode in Figma. If I want to darken the background, I can darken that. Cool. So uh, one thing that I will say is that make sure if you have additional questions that you ask them in the Q&A. So let's see, I'm going to turn off dark mode. So I'm going to say use light mode and uh, let's just kind of bring our backdrop back up. There we go. Let me make sure that it has good contrast for all of you watching at home. So simple and easy thing. I can paste shapes and stuff into Fig Jam. Now, Let's say if I'm working in Figma and I want to bring stuff over into FigJam, right? And these can be things like images, right? Let's say you've brought in some images, you've you've cropped them out, um, and you want to make a little little library, right? Let's say you want to bring in like custom fonts. You have some text. You're you're using the font editor. You're adding things like drop shadows and 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 lines. Um, all of these things can be brought over to FigJam. So if I was to, let's make a custom one. If I were to say, hello world. And here I make this text larger. I press the K key to make it larger. And I'm going to set this to, let's just pick a different font. There we go. This is a different font that I don't have in FigJam, but I want to use this in Figma because let's say it's a branded font that that I particularly enjoy, right? It's my personal brand. I can go over here, I can click on effects. Let's say I add in a, a drop shadow and I really blur it out. And uh, let's even give it a custom color. 
right? And I know this is looking wonderful, right? I, my designer card is on full display here. So I got this color. I got that drop shadow. Now I can bring this over to Fig Jam. I can just hit Command C or Control C if you're on Windows and then paste it over here. Now this object in Fig Jam, I can still edit it, right? So I can say Miggy, right? I can type in Lauren. So Lorem, like Lorem Ipsum, Lauren Ipsum. Ooh, we should have Lauren Ipsum, uh, like a whole you know, placeholder text that's based off of things that Lauren says. So my Figma shows an unhappy face symbol. I don't know what you're doing there. So here, this, this allows me to work in between, right? So in Fig Jam, when you're type primarily working, you know, you're, you're limited. You have simple, you have bookish, you have technical, and you have scribbled. And this is meant to keep you focused, right? Like you're super focused. You don't want to think too much about typefaces. When you're in Figma, you're thinking about typefaces. But if you absolutely are concerned and you're just like, man, I really want to make my Fig Jam file look more like me to represent my inner teacher, my, my inner designer, you can copy and paste that in. All right. So here we go. So this is that. Uh, where can I get the keyboard shortcuts for Figma? Great question. If you are looking for keyboard shortcuts in either Figma or Fig Jam, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I'm going to type Command P. This brings up the search menu. And then I can type in keyboard shortcuts. I press return. And I can see every keyboard shortcut necessary. So if you're just getting started with Figma or Fig Jam, you can pull up these keyboard shortcuts. So let's say if I head on over to Fig Jam and I want to find keyboard shortcuts specifically for Fig Jam, I can hit command forward slash keyboard shortcuts. And there it is. Now Fig Jam, because it is a different tool, right? It's for doing different things. It's to keep away a lot of the specifics of design and to focus just on creating a whiteboard, creating a template, creating an activity so you can work with others. So here I can see some of these tools. And actually I found a really fun, um, I found a really fun uh, 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 shortcut in here the other day, right? So while stamping, stamp on selection. This is one that I found in here and this is actually kind of great. I'm gonna show you a fun little thing. If I was to have a sticky and let's say I wanna stamp on the sticky, I can press the E key, boom, the E key. And there we go, I have a, uh, I have a little thumbs up and I could stamp. Now, let's say, that I'm really enthusiastic about this, right? Let's say over here, it's like ice cream, ice cream. And I'm like super stoked about ice cream. I can select that stamp or that sticky right there, compress the S key. And now when I ch click on one of these stamps, if I hit command return and command return, command return or control return, if you're on windows, if I just hold that down, it'll just start populating it with tons and tons and tons of stickies. So if you're working with students, younger students, I would highly recommend that you do not tell them about the shortcut, but it's a lot of fun. And maybe as a celebratory gesture, you should. So let's, let's do that one more time. If I had like a sticky, let's drop this sticky here. And, uh, I, while I have it selected, I'm going to press the E key. I couldn't click on the little star. So now I hit command return and it's just going to fill up with stars. So this is how I find my, my fun shortcuts and, 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 and insights into fig jam and, and Figma is using the keyboard shortcuts. I'll show you that one more time. So command P or control P and here keyboard shortcuts, you just type that in and you get them in here. And this will give you a comprehensive list of various shortcuts that'll help you work while you're in Figma and or Fig Jam. So it'll give you a little bit more of a leg up on others who might just be learning. Cool. So what I want to do is hop back over here. And now I'm going to show you, right? The reason that I'm showing you copy and paste is because that's an easy way to bring things back and forth. But let's say you want to make a custom library of reusable things. You have, um, let's say you have attendance, right? Let's say here, 
for the EDU team, we've made these special little cards for ourselves to kind of show every time we have a brainstorming session that we're chiming in. So let's say if you have like 30 students in your class, you can have a library of name tags for them that can be published to your team that they can then reuse. So I'm going to introduce this concept. I'm going to walk you through this concept. I'm going to show you how to publish this library and how to add it and use it again and again. So here I'm in this file. There we go. There we go. I have these three. I'm going to show you how to make these. So here, let me just move this up. I'm going to press the O key to draw a circle. There we go. I drew a circle. This circle is about, let's make it about 200 by 200. I'm going to add a stroke to that and make that stroke about a value. Let's make it six. There we go. I'm going to put it on the center. Now I can populate this shape with an image. It could be any image. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to file, place image video. Another thing that I want to show you all here is that this is the whole file menu. Anything that you're looking for Figma can be found in here as well. Um, and so place image video. When you see a lot of these, they will also have their shortcut key to the right. So if it's something that you find yourself doing a lot, you can get yourself a little bit more accustomed with that shortcut key. It's here as well. So this is shift command K. So if you're on Windows, it'll be uh, shift control K. So let's press the keyboard shortcut. And here, what I can do is I can find an asset that's going to have a photo with my headshot on it. So there we go. I've made an avatar icon. So here is the shape. Over here, you can see the fill, right? This is me right there. And I'm going to create this as a name tag. And we're going to make this into a component along with these other ones that we have here. Okay, so I'll show you, I'll show you one more time. Somebody asked to repeat the process. I press the O key, I draw it a shape. I'm holding both the option and the shift key on Windows. It's the alt and the shift key. Uh, and I'm scaling that circle up, right? It scales it at the same time. If I don't, it'll just kind of make it a weird shape. If I hold down option and shift or alt and shift, these are primary mod, uh, modifier keys, we call them. Uh, I can scale that up. I can add a stroke. I'm going to make that stroke six and let's say 200. And uh, I'm going to grab a photo of Lauren over here. I'm going to click on this shape. I'm going to copy that fill, command C or control C and paste it right here. So I'm going to make us some new name tags, Lauren. And here I'm going to press the T key. That's the type tool. So the text tool, I'm going to click and I'm going to type in Miggy. And my text is way too big. So I'm going to come over here and bring this down. I'm going to show you all a nice little shortcut too that not too many people are aware of. If I hold, let's say I hover over this and I hold down the option key, the option key, once again, it's one of those modifier keys we're using a lot. It could be the alt key if you're on Windows. I'm going to drag this to the left. So if I select my text, hold down the option key and drag this to the left, I can scale my type really quickly. So I can bring that all the way down. So now I can move this over here. This is my little type. And I'm going to make this look just like these. I'm going to create a little bounding box around that. Okay, so this is my text field. And I'm going to create a little bounding box around that. I'm going to use what is called an auto layout frame. I have a previous workshop on YouTube that explains in excruciating depth how to use auto layout. So you could check that out, figma.com uh, or youtube.com slash figma. Look in the EDU playlist to find auto layout. And there's much more in depth there. But here I'm going to make a quick auto layout frame. I'm going to press shift A. Shift A is going to take this text layer and it's going to put it inside of a frame that's going to hug it and, and match its size. So shift a right now you'll see, I've actually been in this, uh, this file for a while because it says frame 26, 260,000, whatever. I'm going to rename this. I'm just going to call this title. Right. And so this frame, the reason I needed to do that is I can give it a background color. So I'm going to select it here in the canvas. I'm going to come over here to the right, and I'm going to choose this fill option. 
in the design panel, you can change things that you have here on your canvas. So if I select it, I come over here, there's my auto layout. I'm gonna come down here just a little bit. I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna choose the fill. And here by it's making it white, but let's make it a different color. There we go. Now, this background color is being applied to the auto layout frame. And what's special about the auto layout frame is that as I type, it grows and it fills that space. I can also give it padding. So here I'm going to select this. Over here, the auto layout frame, that's this frame that I have here. I can click and I can add additional padding. So let's say 20 pixels on the left side. Let's say 20 pixels on the top. Let's do 20 pixels on the bottom. And let's make the right side stick out just a little bit more, say 40, right? So this is the auto layout frame. And I'll go over this one more time as well for those of you that, that want to see it done. Maybe I need a little more padding on my left. If I hover over that, I can just click and drag that space. Now this, once again, is the auto layout frame that allows me to do this. The auto layout frame is hugging the contents, the contents being the text field. So it is making itself just as large as that text field is. And let's give that a stroke. And that should also be a value of six and to the center. So there you go. I got my little, got my little name tag here. Now let's make one for Lauren. I can just duplicate this, boom, and I have another one for Lauren and I can change it. But uh, let's just kind of like cover that process again. I'm going to press the T key. I'm going to type in Lauren. I'm going to press Shift A. Hey, Lauren. So I press Shift A. That puts it inside the auto layout frame. I'm just going to call this title. Uh, I'm going to come over here to the right. Let's give it a background color. Uh, let me choose. I'm going to make Lauren like a like a coral color. Uh, here, I am going to select that auto layout frame. Here are the properties. And if you remember, I selected a value from the left that's I think like forty, then twenty, then forty. Oop, that one's forty, and that one's twenty. Right. And if I want to, and there's, trust me, there's other ways of doing this that are way more efficient. I'm just doing it this way for the sake of repeating that process. I'm going to select that frame once again. Let's add the stroke, add a value of six. So we have our two little, you know, we have our two little components. Let's, let's make them into components, just like we're going to make these. And then we're going to publish them. So I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to come up here. This is the components object. If I if I click on this the canvas, you won't see it. You have to select something that you want to make into a component. A component is an asset that you're going to reuse again and again. And in this case, we're going to make a library of name tags. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to create this as a component. As soon as I make this a component, I can give it a name. I'm just going to double click here. And I'm going to say, you know, name, or I'm going to say Miggy, you know, name tag. Same with Lauren. I'm going to select Lauren's. I'm going to create that component. I'm going to double click and say Lauren name tag. Now, I have a few other ones down here as well. I also have these stickers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these into the mix as well. You'll see I have one, two, three, four. I've already named them. You know, they're already pretty similar. I'm going to select all of them at the same time. And when I come up here, I'm going to click that little arrow to the right of that components menu. And you see there's this option to create multiple components. So this one is already put together. It's actually made inside of another frame. This one is already put together. This one's already put together. So I can select all four of those and I can create them as a component set. Oh, sorry. I don't, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. My bad. Let me undo that. Uh, Command Z to undo, Control Z to undo if you're on Windows. I'm going to create multiple components. I clicked on the wrong one. So create multiple components. 
And what I have here is now one, two, three, four components. So in this file, I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six components. I'm going to show you how to publish this. And so then this way we can have these now as Fig Jam stickers. So let me bring this down here. Going to click up on the canvas, right? Anywhere on the canvas. Here I am clicked on the canvas. Um, I'm going to click up here. Oops. And I'm going to choose publish library, right? And now what that's doing is if while I'm working on this file, I look over here in the assets panel. This assets panel um, has... You'll, you'll see some other things in here. We're not going to talk about those just yet. But this assets panel will show these components that I've made, right? And now what that means for your file, just like your local file, is that I could just drop in a bunch of Mayas in here, right? So I have those like little name tags. But what it means to publish this file means that these items are now going to be reusable across all of your files inside of the team. Right. And the team, if I go back to files here, here's the team. This is my education team. These are the two files that we currently have. I'm going to go back into it. So if I click, let's go back to our page three. All right. We're back in page three. So I'm going to click up here. I'm going to publish this library. And here it's going to give me like a full listing of everything that I have. My UI is really zoomed in. So if I zoomed out, I'll get a better view of them all. Right. There we go. So you can see I have Alex, Lauren, we have the duplicate Lauren, Maya, Miggy, and the duplicate Miggy. I'm going to hit publish, right? I can even put in here, what is these? These are, you know, EDU team name tags. So in theory, you can make a whole set for your class and I can show you a faster way to do that as well. Uh, but I've just published those. And um, so I see a question. Can you archive the publication, new school, new publication? You can have different files that you can publish with, and then you can reference those. I'm going to show you exactly how that works. So here I just published that file. I'm going to head back on over to our little Fig Jam workspace, right? So the Fig Jam space, when I used to teach over at RIT, what would be what would be great for this is this might be our our class agenda, or this might be where you know we have a question and answer. You know, I might have. Um, like, you know, like a question of the day for all of my students, or this was where we might brainstorm and collaborate an idea. Uh, let's say if I'm going to take attendance in this file. So what I can do is I can click on more. And here in more, there's this sticker panel. And in this sticker panel, you see it says libraries add your own. So it has all of these existing stickers, right? And these are really fun. But what's great is that I can add that library that I just created. Now, it was in this file called Figma Fig Jam Workshop May 23 Live. I know it's not the most intuitive, but that's right here. Fig, Figma Fig Jam Workshop May 2023. I'm going to add that to this file. And now, if you look, here it is. There is my library. So when I click on that, I can dock this to the side and then voila, I can bring in these stickies. It might take a second if you have a large image in there, it might blip in, but now I can just bring in these stickies um, and then here they go. Uh, one other fun thing is if you leave the text unlocked, I can double click in here and I could type in new text. So if let's say I don't want my nickname in there, I want to put in my full name, you know, Miguel A. Cardona Jr., right? This is now an editable object that we have in here. These are elements that are reused. So can the average Chromebook access this fluidly? Absolutely, yes, they can. You'd be surprised. One benefit from the Chromebook as well, if you have a touchscreen one, is you could draw on here uh, you know, with that touchscreen as well. It's a lot of fun. I have a Chromebook and I like to play with that. So. I'm going to head back over to this file and let's say I want to add to that published file. Let's say I've created these wonderful little stickers here 
and I want to use them because it's part of the class culture, or let's say it's part of like, you know, you got a bunch of students and they're, they're working on a project together and they, 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 they might have their own reusable elements. Maybe they're making little wireframe elements. I'm going to take all of these, right? So these are all made, they draw a frame and you put your artwork inside of it, right? So I put my artwork inside of this frame. Um, this frame, I can hide that fill background. So if I want it to be transparent and uh, I can, let's see, I can bring this frame down, right? And then this now can become an object that I bring over into Fig Jam. Let's just give this fill, let's apply like a, not a radial gradient, let's do a angular gradient. These are fun and make that like red and whatever. So this is just an example of what might be, let's say another sticker, right? So these are my stickers. If I want to prep them for publishing, I can select them all. I'm actually going to make a duplicate of these. I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to have duplicates. I'm going to create two different types of stickers. So here I'm going to select them all, right? So they're all selected and do the same thing. I'm going to create multiple components. Now they've all been named as well. So you can name them, just double click, click on that name. You can select it. You can name it over here as well by double clicking. Uh, if you want a shortcut for renaming something, just hit command R and you can rename it. So I can select the science one, command R, type in chemistry. And it's now updated. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, if you want to rename things all together, right, I can select them all, hit Command R, and I have this awesome interface that pops up and I can rename everything. So I can say, oh, okay, let's use their current name, but let's put something before. Let's say, you know, uh, Mr., you know, or let's say Mr. Cardona uh, uh, stickers, you know, dash their name, and I rename it. Now they all have that as a prefix to that. Let me undo. So once again, it's command R allows you to rename things in mass. Uh, so here we go. We have all of these components. We want to publish them. We want to have them available in our other file. So I'm going to head on over to Fig Jam, right? So here's our Fig Jam file. We added a bunch of stuff. Let's come down here. I'm looking at my library, but they're not there. I'm like, what could be going on? So here, doop, 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 doop. oh, did I publish it? I might have I might have made a little mistake. Let me make sure that I publish the library. Here we go. I didn't publish it. Publish it, and I'm going to put in add stickers. Let's hit publish. Now, just so y'all know, this process exists for other reasons as well. So, like designers use this to make reusable elements when designing websites. Um, but I love to use it to you know make wireframes and to make a bunch of other objects. Um, you know, just for like working on. So here we go. Let's do this again. I'm going to hit more and I'm going to click here. And if we look, all of the new published stickers are here, right? So I got my A plus. And once again, if you want that to stick, I'm going to dock this to the side, right? I got all of these new stickers that I can reuse. Now I shared this with you all in that file. So you can use these stickers. You can make them yourselves. I can scale them, make them smaller, right? Um, so these are all illustrations that were made in Figma. Now, if you want to learn how to make vector illustrations, uh, last month we did an entire workshop on creating vector illustrations. So check it out on YouTube. Um, so that will give you a lot of tips and tricks for creating illustrations and stickers that are a bit more custom that you can make for yourselves. So the published description won't show up in Fig Jam. Um, that will show up. So if you were working with, let's say, a developer, um, they would be able to see kind of like that history um, for those 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 published uh, 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 comments. So here I am. I'm back in Figma. Uh, so I'm going to delete. Right. So we have all of these components here. Now let's say that as I'm working, I want to exclude something from being published, right? Let's say this A plus, you know, illustration that I have here, uh, for whatever reason, I need it to not be there. I can go to my assets panel. 
I can see this here, this local component. I can right click on it and I can choose to hide it while when it's being published, right? So once I do that, it'll move it down here, you know, to the to the bottom. Like it's gonna just kind of keep it out of view. Uh, so it's right here or lower. Yeah, let me see. There it is, publishing custom sticker. So it's moved it down. Um, and so now when I go to publish, right? it's removing this from being published. So let's say for instance, you know, you had somebody, they decided that they're leaving the class, um, you know, they moved. Uh, so if you need to remove them, you know, sadly you can easily do so. So now I can click back over here and you'll notice that it's already been removed. Can you send? Okay, yeah, yeah, we will be sharing those out. Um, oh yeah, uh, Lauren, can you share the uh, the YouTube link for the illustrations? I believe it's on, um, yeah, it's on the Figma YouTube. All right, cool. So now that we've done that, okay, uh, I'm going to show you just a few more tricks for publishing files that you're going to be using. And I know that some people are asking about the auto layout frame, so I'll show you that one more time as well. These items here. Uh, let's say that I don't want to make them individual stickers, right? And what I mean by that is if I go into Fig Jam and I click on more, let's say I go back into these sticker packs. I click on the meeting agenda sticker pack and I drop in a push pin. When I drop the push pin down, you'll see this little option up top that has the same icon as the components. And what that allows you to see are the different variations of that component, right? These are what are known as variants. So earlier when I messed up and I created a component set, that's what those uh, allows that to, to be made in that way. Um, so instead of like over cluttering this with all of the different color options, I can create one option that has multiple different color ways that can be um, adjusted. So I will show you how to create a variant and how that works in Figma. So right now I have A plus light bulb science. So these are our illustrations. Let's let's uh, let's make two really quick. I'm going to draw a frame, um, and in this frame, let's make something simple. I'm just going to make a little arrow, right? So there we go. Um, I clicked. I'll show you what I'm doing a little bit slower. I click the pen tool. Uh, I click a point. Hold the shift key. I click another point. I hold the shift key. I click another point. Uh, see how it's still sticking? I can press escape. I can click on that point and hold the shift key and click another point and then press escape again. And I can make that arrow just a little bit thicker. There we go. I have an arrow. Uh, if I want to, I can press done and the arrow has been added to this frame. I can select this frame and I can remove the fill and I will call this arrow, right? Now I can duplicate this command D, right? And here I can select this arrow and press shift H. And I now have a left arrow and uh, let's duplicate that again. Command D. I can now rotate this. Now we have an up arrow and let me duplicate that one last time. Select this and press shift V for vertical, right? To flip this upside down. So horizontal is shift H and V is sh uh, shift V is vertical. So I've made a left arrow, a right arrow, an up arrow and a down arrow. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this reusable. Let's let's snazz it up a little bit. I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna click on the effects panel, give it a drop shadow. Everybody loves a good drop shadow. There we go. Let's make it a little bit oomphier. There we go. And I got my oomphy drop shadow. So with this arrow, I can come up here and I can select create component set. So now that this is a component set, technically it will show up as just one arrow in FigJam, but when you click on it, you can choose the options of what type of arrow you would like to see. So here, when I select this, I can give them names. So here, the current variant, right? So they're all different variants on the same arrow. I'm gonna call this 
direction. Oops, I could spell direction. There we go. I've spelled it correctly now. This one is the right. I select this one. This one is the left. Select this one. This one is up. I select this one. And this one is down. So now when I go back and I select them all, I can see the names of each one. If I click this little configuration, right, I can actually put in some uh, notes. Once again, this is usually used when you're working with developers or engineers and they're converting designs uh, to code. Um, but here, this is just a very simple way of kind of putting this together. So now I can publish the library. There we go. There's Arrow. Let's publish it. And when I go back to FigJam and I pull up the library that we made, check this out. I got this arrow and this arrow is awesome. It comes with superpowers. I can click right here and I can choose a different direction. So I can duplicate that. And I know I could just rotate it, but how cool is it that I can have these custom versions of my own arrow? Right? So now this library, once again, this library if I create yet again another FigJam file, I can click more um, and I can use it, right? So there, there are these, these elements. I can add it to this page, right? There's my Figma FigJam workshop. You can name it to something better. And there it is. And I can stick it over there. And now I could drop in, you know, those stickers. And my fun little arrow and the arrow has variants. So let's say these stickers up here, instead of having all the individual stickers, I can just make them all variants of that first one. So let's select all of those stickers right there, click up here and choose create component set. Uh, let's give this a name and I'm gonna call this EDU stickers. And now I can click up here and we'll publish it and it's published. I can go into the file I was just in and you'll sh you should see edu stickers right there. When I hover over it, I can see the name. I can drag it onto this page. And when I click right here, you see the drop down and I can choose which one I want it to be. I could duplicate that and then pick a different one. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. So if you want to make stuff, you know, for your own files. So how can you use this in a classroom? Um, you can make like, you know, uh, uh, special little cards. I'll even show you some of the existing things that I have made. The meeting agenda kit. This is something that like I put together. I actually made an editable meeting agenda. So this can be customized. That can be like, yo, Miggy's class. And this is fully editable. So I can say, you know, like, you know, uh, Mr. Cardona's class uh, and then put in today's date and you can fill it out. So you can make almost like little templates for your students. Um, so if you actually check out the auto layout, this is all made using auto layout. And what's cool about that is if I were to copy and paste this, you know, this will continue to extend to fill the content. So you can make these elements reusable. Or let's say if you're working with students in a design class and you want them to make their own reusable elements. Uh, let's say you're teaching design. Let's say you're teaching app design. You can draw out a frame. Let me draw out a frame. And I'm going to make that frame an iPhone 14. So here's my iPhone 14 frame. And I want to use this for, for wireframing. Um, I can select this frame. I can give it a stroke value. I can put it on the outside. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's round those corners off. Um, and let's, let's make that like light gray. So here I could have a phone. Um, Oh, thank you, Lauren. All right, we're gonna we're I'm gonna finish this up and then we're gonna take it on over to questions. So here we go. So I have this this phone. Uh, I'm gonna make this a component. So here we go. We have our iPhone 14, you know, component for like let's say wireframes. Um, so now we can publish this. There we go. Publish. And now here, you know, I will have in here that. 
So now if we're, we have our custom little wireframe, I could easily duplicate them. And if they're going to work on their wireframes, you know, they could just draw out, you know, what the app might be. Right. So what this does is it allows you to make your own tools within FigJam and allows you to use them pretty readily. Now, what's great about publishing these libraries is that if you create a new Figma file, right, I created a brand new Figma file, I can click here, I can open up the, uh, the libraries, and I can use these elements in my new file. And what's really cool about this is if I update any one of these, right? So let's say here in my EDU stickers, you know, uh, let's say I update the colors on this. I can select this object. Let's say I change all of the yellow, right? Let's say I change all of the yellow to like blue, right? And I change all of the red to white, right? And I have this new sticker. I can publish an update and I can go to my file here and it tells me, oh, hey, you have an update available. Let's review it. Let's update it. And now it's been updated. So here we go. So here it is in my file updated as, as if, you know, uh, uh, that's been pushed out to like everyone. So if you have something that is reusable and then you realize, oh, wow, I made that mistake, you know, then you can publish it. And then every file that you have is now updated. Now, if you want to unpublish a file, I want to make sure that I covered this really quickly. Um, you can go here. So here I'm in the file that's published. And by the way, when you go to your file browser, published files will have a dark gray icon. So here, this is a regular Figma file. The published files will have this dark gray icon. So the question is, do they only work on teams? Yes, they only work on teams. It must be a team. But if you have multiple teams, you can actually publish across those as well. All right. So now that this can be published, it can be, it can be reused. Um, there was one last thing that I wanted to share. So if I go here and I come down to agenda kit, this is an example of that agenda kit that I made. So this is in that community file that we shared at the beginning of the workshop. You can look through here. Each one of these is a different component set with all of the variants. If you want to just dig through the whole file and studied how I put it together, like what are the shapes? How are these being created? How are these being made? Uh, I've provided that for you here. So right now, all of these elements inside of this file have been flagged to not be published. And I'm going to show you, this is one last little trick here. When I click on this frame that contains them all, right? And I press enter, it selects them all. If I press shift enter, it goes back to the frame. But if I press enter, it'll select everything nested inside of it. Now that they're all selected, you'll notice over here on the right that each of them has a little period before their name. That is another way that you can hide things from being published is by having that little period in their actual name. So if I want to remove that period from the name of all of these elements and publish them along with everything else that I have in this file, I can hit Command R, right? Bringing Command R full circle. Oops. I hit refresh, my bad. All right, let's select it. Um, Command R, here we go, rename. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match that little period, right? So anything that has a period, I'm gonna replace it with nothing. And now I've just removed the period on all of these items. So same thing here. This is a seating chart kit, right? So these are seating charts for your classroom. Um, they too, also have the little period before their name so they don't get published into this kit as well. I press return, they're all selected. I press command R for the rename. These are our pro tips right here. I'm gonna match that little period. We're gonna replace them, we're gonna rename them. So now when I publish this file, this file is gonna have everything in it. Publish library. Uh, let me zoom out my UI a little bit. There we go. So you can see all of these things that we've added. Let's publish that file. It might take a little bit because there's so much in there. So we got that little timer going. 
loading all the way up. Okay, this library is publishing and it's going to be available within that team. Here we go. Let's open up that FigJam file. All right, here we are in FigJam. Let's open up those stickers and let's look at that workshop template. And now it's got everything, right? So I got little fire extinguishers, right? I have I have, I've mixed in all of the templates together, right? So now we can make a, a seating chart, you know, with like little desks and I have little plugins. Like, let's say if I want to set this up. So this is why this is a lot of fun, especially if you're teaching like an art or design class, students can make things that they can then reuse. It gives them another mindset on the stuff that they create. It's not just creating a poster, but it's creating little components that can be used to build a poster, right? It gets them in this mindset of these little objects that can be redone. All right. So uh, this is going to go over just a little bit past the hour. Hopefully that's okay, Lauren. Uh, but I'm going to hop back over here into those questions. And let's see what questions we have. All right. So Ben asks, how do you set your default padding value for auto layout or is it just the nudge amount? So the padding value will be based off of the nudge amount. Uh, the question uh, I'll show you exactly here. So if I have a rectangle, uh, let's press shift A, right? We put it in an auto layout frame. You see that value of eight? Uh, that value of eight comes, if I hit command P and I type in nudge amount, it comes from my big nudge. So nudging is when you press the shift key and you move it with your arrows. Small nudge is just moving with an item on your arrows. So all of my objects move at half a pixel. And when I press the shift key, they move at eight pixels. So if this was instead 12, now if I hold like the shift key and press up, show you that here. If I hold the shift key and press up, it goes by that larger value. It goes by the big nudge. Cool. Uh, so do you have to have a team for a library? So yes. So these libraries, these work with education teams. So either they're education pro teams or you're working on an org with teams in that org they have to work in that way. Um, you can't publish from your drafts. So you must work in the, excuse me, in the team space. Uh, they also don't work on starter teams. Uh, so we need to create these objects inside of a frame, right? Uh, do we always need a frame? Thank you. So yes. So either they're going to be made into a frame or they've been made into, uh, you need to make them into a component. So if I were to have, you know, let's say if I were to have three circles, right? So I have one circle, two circle, three circles. Um, if I select them and I create multiple components, then it creates a component from each individual circle. If I have three circles and I make them into a component, then it basically what it's doing is it's creating a frame around all three of those. So whether you're implicitly creating a frame or not, um, the component is still kind of creating a frame in that space. Um, auto layout as well is technically a frame. So if I was to have, let's say one circle, two circle, three circle, four circle, let me make them a little bit darker. So if I select those and press shift A, they're now in an auto layout frame, right? So I can scale them, move them back and forth. What auto layout does is it allows everything to be, you know, placed in its, its own space. And it allows the frame to either fit and condense to the contents, or it allows the contents to grow and to fill into the frame. So be sure to uh, check out my video on auto layout. It's a pretty good deep dive. Uh, try to make sure I go as slow paced as possible in that video. Is there any way to mirror images or vectors without doing it manually? Um, yeah. So if you want to to mirror, I know exactly what you're asking, um, uh, Lara. So here, like, let's say if I press, um, let's say I want to create an illustration. And if I'm drawing on the left, I want to mirror it on the right. And we're going to use components for that. So here, uh, what I do is I'll create a frame and I create this as a component. And then I'm going to duplicate this frame, hit command D. And I'm going to move it to 
to the uh, to the right there, right? So this is a copy of this frame. And this one, I'm going to flip horizontally. I'm going to press Shift H. Now, when I draw in this frame, it will automatically mirror on the right, right? Because this here is the main component, and this is an instance of that component. So any changes I make to the main component will then be reflected in the instance. And it allows you to create really fun things. So likewise, one thing that I usually like to do with this is I like to do some rotational symmetry where I will create an object, right? So let's make an arrow. Let's make that arrow a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it into a component. So this is the main component. I'm going to hold down the option key, alt key if you're on Windows, drag this down. Let's rotate that. And uh, here I can select them both, copy, paste, rotate, copy, paste, rotate. And now whenever I edit this main one here, they all work in unison, right? So they're all just copies of that first instance, giving you the ability to create really fun graphics. So once again, you know, that is the main component. Now, what I can do too, is I can make this into a component. It'll kick out this main component and it'll allow me to have just a lot more fun with that. So if you like this, you are definitely gonna wanna check out next month's uh, uh, Figma for EDU demo where I'm gonna be talking about creating logos in Figma design. All right, cool. So uh, thank you all for attending. Thank you for the questions. Thanks for, for hanging in there, participating. Remember, you can get that file at figma.com slash at education. You can find out more about Figma's education program at figma.com slash education. Um, feel free to reach me on Twitter at Miggy, M-I-G-G-I at Miggy. Uh, that's me on Twitter. Um, so yeah, remember to config. Our annual conference is coming up June 21st, 22nd. It's free to attend virtually. Also, uh, you can join in person if you're going to be in the San Francisco area during that time. Uh, Lauren has a code if you're an education user to help support you, uh, to bring you to the conference in person. Um, and I believe that's all that we have for today. Be sure to look through the file. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Check for future events at figma.com slash events. And this recording will be posted to Figma's YouTube within about the next week or so. So give us a little bit of time. We appreciate you and thank you all. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. Take care, y'all.